Pyramid charts are useful for visualizing demographic data across multiple categories. They're easy to build using bar charts or conditional formatting, but there are a few rules you must follow depending on the approach you choose. Let's take a look. The easiest way to create a pyramid chart is with a bar chart. The trick is to convert the values for the left-hand series to negatives, so they sit on the left side of the vertical axis. In this example, I'll put the male data on the left, and I can easily convert the values to negatives using paste special. I need to enter minus one into an empty cell and then control C to copy it. Select the values that I want to convert, paste, special, and then in here I want values and multiply. Now the values are all negative. I can delete the minus one in this cell. It's done its job. I'll select the data and then insert and then we just want the 2D bar chart. First thing I want to do is set the series to overlap one another. So with any part of the chart selected, Control one to open the formatting pane. Let me bring it over here so it's beside the chart. Here I want the series overlap to be 100%. And I'm also going to change the gap width to 50%. That just makes the bars a little wider. Now you notice that the vertical axis is incorrectly displaying just numbers instead of the year and that's because the year has been picked up as a series so let's fix that i'm going to right click the chart select data here i want to remove the year and for the axis labels here i'm going to edit it and pick up the years and you can see in the chart behind it's now displaying correctly you'll notice that my pyramid is upside down and there's a couple of ways you can fix this, either by sorting the data in descending order, or you can set the chart axis to display the categories in reverse order. When you do this, then you also have to switch the horizontal axis so that the labels are now positioned high. Now it's counterintuitive. What you've got to keep in mind is that a bar chart is a column chart on its side essentially so in this case high is actually low. I also want to position my vertical axis to the left so let's go in and change the position of this to low. Now notice that we have negative values for the male side of the pyramid and that's because our source data are negatives but that was just a trick to get the bars to sit on the left hand side of the chart so let's change the number format of the horizontal axis and we can use a custom number format and I've already got some in my list I'm also going to scale it to millions so we'll select this one here if you don't have this format in your list you can type the format in here and then add it I'm also going to change the colors of my male and female series I'm going to avoid the stereotypical colors and instead for male I'm going to go with this green and for female I'm going to go with orange Let's give the chart a title and I'm done. So you can see it's fairly easy to build a pyramid chart using a regular old bar chart. However, what if you prefer the vertical axis labels to sit in the middle of the bars? Let's take a look. Again, with this technique, the source data requires the left hand series to be negative values, which they already are here. I'll start by selecting the data, insert, and then I want the 2D bar chart. Let's bring it up here into this space and I'll make it a little bigger. I'll start with the vertical axis. We're going to position them in reverse order. Let's switch this now so that labels are high. We'll set the number formatting as well while I'm here. Again, I want a custom number format. And this time I'm just going to pick this format the first part is the positive value format and the second part is the negative value format. Notice they're identical. I'm going to change the gap width just to make the bars a bit wider. I don't need to worry about the series overlap and you'll see in a moment it doesn't affect the chart. I'm going to enter a space in the chart title. I want the chart title to be blank but I don't want to delete it because I want to retain the space above the plot area to put in a manual title later. So I'm just going to type in a space and that hides the title. In this one, I'd like my legend to sit at the top. So let's change that. Now I'm ready to duplicate this chart. So with it selected, Control D to duplicate. Now I've got two. 
one here and one here. I want to delete the female series from this chart on the left. And in this one, delete the male series. So just selecting the bars and pressing the delete key gets rid of it. Let's make them not so big. And I'll move this over. Now I want to remove the outline and the fill from each of the charts. So you have to do this one at a time. On the formatting pane, I want no fill and no outline. And then this one, the same. I don't want the vertical axis in this chart, so we're just going to remove it. No primary vertical axis. What this allows me to do is position the charts on top of one another. Now what I want to do is line up the vertical grid lines so that they're in the same place in each chart. And I'm doing this so that the scale is the same. And that's essential to being able to compare these charts like for like. So let's just move this over so I've got some more room for my two charts. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the horizontal axis in each chart is the same. So here the minimum, maximum, major and minor. And then if I click on this one, they're exactly the same. The only difference being is now the minimum is zero instead of the maximum. That's obviously because this is the positive data and this one's the negative data. If they're not the same, then you need to hard key the values to ensure they're the same. Otherwise you can't compare like for like and that's essential in making sure that your charts convey the true picture of the data. Lastly, let's insert a text box for the chart title. I'm just going to format that font in a shade of gray. We'll make it a bit bigger and a bit wider. Let's center it in that text box and then I'll get rid of the shape outline on the text box so it just sits above the chart. You might also like to move the legends over so that they're aligned above the data. So there you have a pyramid chart with the vertical axis in the center. Now another way we can create pyramid charts is with conditional formatting. With conditional formatting data bars, there's no need to convert one series to negative values. We can simply select the first series and then on the home tab, conditional formatting, data bars, and I'll choose this solid fill. We need to edit the format, so we'll go into manage rules and then I'll bring the rule manager over and double click the rule to open it. And here I can edit it. So here I want the maximum to be based on a formula and that formula is the maximum of both the male and female values. That's going to ensure that the axes on both sides are the same scale. So you want to be comparing like with like. I'm going to change the color to this green shade and the bar direction here, I want it to run right to left. I'll click OK and OK. And we've done the male side. All I need to do is repeat that for the female. So again, data bars, solid fill. We'll go in and edit the rule. Here again, I want formula and it's the same formula. Maximum of both series. And we'll go with this orange color. I don't need to change the bar direction. Click OK and OK and we're done. Now you'll notice that conditional formatting data bars don't have a horizontal axis. So you may prefer to leave the numbers visible in the cells. I like to align them close to the center line, but it's important that the numbers themselves are still right aligned to one another. So you can do this using the indent button and just click it until it moves across. Let's align the label. And for the male series, I'm just going to bump it slightly to the left just to take it away from that vertical axis so that the male and female values are equidistant from that vertical axis. And it's as simple as that. Now you may prefer to have the vertical axis labels in the center of the bars, in which case I'll just copy this and paste it over here and then we'll move them. So I'm just going to hold down shift and left click and drag and you can see the vertical bar where it's going to insert the values insert them. This one here, these columns are slightly different width, so let's reduce the indentation. And then we have our pyramid chart with the vertical axis labels in the center. Now with both of these charts, it's really important that the column width is the same. So you just right click, 
and make sure that it's showing a number there. If it's not showing a number there, then that will indicate that one of the columns is slightly different. So you can just type in the value that you want, and click OK. When you have two columns side by side, you can simply resize them with a left click of your mouse. So there you have three different ways to create pyramid charts in Excel. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.